Hey everybody, it's Alex with Care Conscious, and today we're going to talk about common communication impairments, how to recognize them in our care recipients, the, the one who we're providing care for. And I'm going to talk about that with Mara Silverman, who is the director, uh, the senior advisor now, and the founder of Triangle Aphasia Project here in North Carolina, and you are a licensed, certified spe speech pathologist. I am. And so tell us, uh, how do we recognize some communication impairments that our loved ones might have? Well, you know, it's interesting. Some that will come acutely from a stroke or a brain injury, a fall, but others are, like you said, just start to show up, and it's uh, very difficult to notice changes in our mother or father no. or whoever we're giving care to's problem, all of a sudden having difficulty remembering to take a pill or asking you the same question over and over yeah. again, um, perhaps not showing up for an appointment. And that's, they're definitely red flags that you need to find some help. Okay, any signs in the way they're, they're speaking, any, like the way they're structuring sentences or Certainly. dropping words, things Certainly. like that? Certainly, and many people will say, I have the word on the tip of my tongue. You know, I know what that word is. And while we all experience that to some degree, if you see the person kind of going all around the word and not coming, if they have more of a speech problem, they may start to have some motor speech problems. So have difficulty getting enough breath for speech or having slurred speech where their um, speech is actually affected and you're able to not distinguish the words that you're looking for. So okay. those are some of the things you might see. Okay. So I assume, tell me if I'm wrong, the next step is getting an assessment. It is. And some people just not sure where to go and what the right step is. It is really a chain of command. You should probably go to your um, physician first, your primary physician, especially if they've known you for a long time, and describe specific incidents of what type of communication breakdown is occurring. I find often families will go to to their primary care physician, then maybe a neurologist, neuropsychologist, speech pathologist, and they come out really with not a lot of answers. And what I say is you need to give specific information. How is this impacting their daily life and what are you seeing? So in order to get the best information, the best diagnosis, the best care possible, you got to get the best information to that, that professional. Absolutely. Um, and one other thing, I know it it's, might be such a difficult thing to say to your loved one, you know, we need to go see a doctor, we need to see a professional, um, because you sound kind of funny. How, how do you communicate that to your loved one? This is a difficult question and a difficult conversation to have with somebody that you love, but what you have to really emphasize is independence. And what most seniors fear is that lack of independence and that inability to do the things that they enjoy doing. And so to put it in that context for a family member, saying we want to maintain your independence for as long as possible, we want to look at resources that are available to help you and we'll be here to support you. And often introducing them to other people who have gone through the same thing is, is very helpful as well. So make them still feel like they're perfectly autonomous, perfectly in control, this is just a suggestion. Uh, the balls in their court. Exactly, and this is really uh, goes back to dignity for the person with um, a communication problem is letting them know that they're not alone and that there's other people that are having the same problem, that you're behind them, that you're their cheerleader, and keep good notes. <laughs> right, you're not alone. You're not alone. No. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.